Hey, how's everyone doing? Uh, uh, good, I hope. Uh, this video is going to be about the Atari 7800. Right? Uh, the Atari 7800 um, came out in early 1987. Um, and unfortunately for Atari, it was a failure. It didn't do well at all, you know. Um, because at the time, you had the NES and you had the Sega Master System. And the... Like I said before, um, with, with the Atari Jaguar, uh, for a system to, to be great, it has to have great games. And the 7800 just didn't have it. You know, I had a lot of good games, but nothing outstanding. Just nothing outstanding. Nothing that would stand out from the crowd. Just like the Atari Jaguar. Uh, so because of that, I failed. And um, no one cared about the, the Atari 7800. Because um, back in the day, N Nintendo was offering so much more value for your money. Um I had better games, better graphics, better everything. So no one gave a shit about the Atari seventy eight hundred and we didn't do it um because uh, um everywhere you looked you 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 saw Nintendo everywhere on posters and, and ads everything. You know? So the seventy eight hundred um um a lot of people didn't know about it, and the ones who did know about it didn't care. Just, just like the Atari Jaguar, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's the way it is. Um, the Atari seventy eight hundred, you can play uh Atari twenty six hundred games and seventy eight hundred games, so that's good. Uh, uh, tickets the only uh, a tick it, the first console that that's backwards compatible, uh, built in, like you know. Whereas before with the Atari fifty two hundred. If you wanted to play 2600 games, you had to buy a separate converter that would go into the cartridge slot that would cost you an extra $200. But that was such a monumental disaster that that never got an international release. So Atari had the, the bright idea to have the console be able to play both library games, give, give, give consumers extra value, which is cool. But by that stage, everyone was browned off toward of Atari 2600 games. You know, it's been been there, done that, and we have to admit, we have to admit, we was in the same boat as well. You know, um, uh, like I said, Nintendo was just offering so much more. You know, so no one cared about it. We we didn't care about it until later on. Now we didn't get more Atari seventy eight hundred till what two thousand twelve. You know, um, it was door cheap. It was only I got it for like eighty euro with a bunch of games. So I decided to get it. You know, uh. And like I said, there are some good games on it. Like the seven eight hundred has more, uh, good, uh, great games than the than the Atari Jaguar does, in my opinion. Like you know, plus it plays all the uh, the twenty six hundred games, and uh, it has Asteroids built in, and it, uh, it's a pretty good version of Asteroids, you know. So yeah, um, so yeah, like the seven eight hundred, um, when it came out in nineteen eighty seven, it was more expensive. Than, than an NES or a Sega Master System, which was really not a, a smart choice. And look, I said it, it's. I mean, you uh, back in the day, uh, the game shops in town in Ireland were Virgin Megastar, um, HMV, and um, Electronics Boutique. Right? You go into them shops and you see Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo everywhere. I mean, and the odd Sega Master System stuff. Atari, you've never even seen it in the shops. Um, uh, we just didn't, you know what I mean? Um, so we didn't, we had no idea this was out. Uh, you know, because um, Atari didn't do do a great job of advertising the thing. Yeah, like, like, like Nintendo did, you know. So I think Atari was saving money by not doing that. But you have to let people know that this this thing is out there. Uh, so um, so the Atari seventy eight hundred was. I believe was was originally meant to come out in nineteen eighty four to to replace the the piece of shit um Atari fifty two hundred, but because of the video game crash that Atari helped happen, uh, it it got shelved and it was stored in Atari's warehouses, and it didn't get released until nineteen eighty seven, because the Nintendo Entertainment System brought the gaming industry back to life. And uh, because it was such a success, um, Atari said to uh, game shops, "Hey, 
Uh, we are the pioneers of video games and we have a system called the 7800 uh, with the mind selling our system in their shops and a few shops were hesitant because of Atari's history with the 78 with the, with, with the 5200 ET and Pac-Man these disasters and people don't forget these things especially a shop of business uh, they don't want to lose out millions of dollars like, like they did previously so um, yeah, okay a few shops decided to sell it but like I said not many did and uh, so um your chances of getting a 7800 back in 87 especially in Ireland, were, were slim you know i mean yeah uh, uh, um yeah, the 7800 um the, uh, like i said it has a, a lure, it has a, we can play the atari 2600 games that are awesome and it has a lure be of 7800 games not that many but there are a few uh but like i said there was nothing outstanding nothing spectacular on the system so it's a shame uh because uh, i think it i think it looks cool you know um the atari jaguar with the, with the strip and everything so i think the set the atari 7800 looks cool with the strip and that um so yeah i mean and um it has a uh, uh, uh two controller parts and them two things beside are, are, are difficulty switches if you want to have the game easy or hard. And like the 7800, it can use um, Sega Mega Drive controllers if you wish, or original um, Atari um, 2600 joysticks. Or the exact, the, 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 uh, the joystick that the 7800 came with. This thing here, this is the, the um, Atari 7800 joystick. Now, um, uh, it looks cool. I have to say that. I mean, I mean, to put the the play on it and everything. Now, um, Atari released uh, control pads for the seven eight hundred as well, which is the best option. Um, I have them somewhere in in the wardrobe. I can't find it, but it's basically the same as an NES pad, a, a D pad, a start button, um, two red buttons, A and B. Uh, so uh. It, your best option is to get the control pad or use an original um Atari 2600 joystick in my opinion because this is just it's it's not it's it's not impossible to use but it's just awkward in my opinion the fact that the buttons are on the side and it feels a bit more flimsy than the 2600 joystick in my opinion uh so yeah and that thing turns and stuff so it feels flimsy you know so yeah um and like I said, the, the controllers and all were more expensive than any S control control pads, you know. So um, yeah. So uh, like it has a um a, a power button. Yeah, uh, there uh, reset button. Um, the reset button, game select, and a pause button. So if you want to pause the game, you have to hit the pause button on the um on the actual system which is a pain in the ass they should have put the pause button on the control pad but they didn't do that all they had was a start button you know so uh you know so um you now the, the back of the system uh you have rf and uh the power lead now the power lead is is very unique uh it won't uh, you have to have an, a, a proper um atari 7800 power supply because it won't take it and else um, it, won't, it won't use a 2600 power supply so an important thing is if you're going to get one of these things make sure it has the original Atari 7800 power supply you know because it's very it's very it has to, it has to have otherwise it won't work so uh, um, now, uh, uh, find the power supply is uh, the original 7800 uh, power supply it's a pain in the ass you know so if you are going to get one make sure it comes with the power supply because uh they're very hard to find and they're very expensive you know because people know that these things the 7800 is in high is, is in higher demand now than it was when it came out uh because of people like me going back and uh, finding out about these things uh so yeah make sure it has the original um 7800 power supply and um to kill the bait on a slant like that it looks pretty cool you know so um yeah that's pretty much it for the um for the system it's made in china 
you know, as you can see, it's made in China. Um, if you can see that, you know, um, this one's made in China and it's a PAL model, you know. So, and um, that's where the cartridges go. And look, I said, the Katari never put uh, dust flaps on their, on their uh, cartridge parts. So, uh, that's just a thing about Atari. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, the Atari 7800, uh, would I recommend it? Uh, well, if you want to get a system that plays 2600 games and 7800 games, then yeah, because you've got a big library of games. And these are door cheap, so but the actual system is well. The, to be honest with you, um, I haven't checked eBay in a while, but they, it's not that not that expensive. But I doubt it unless it's gone up in price. If it has, then that's a pain in the ass. But yeah, I mean, if you want to get an Atari, get they can get the seventy eight hundred because it plays both Lurberry games. It, it, it uses all the controllers. To, like I said, the Sega Mega Drive controller, even the Sega Master System controller. Atari twenty six hundred uh joystick the the piece of shit seventy eight hundred um um joystick or, or the control pad so yeah I mean you have all them options you know and it's very it's very reliable like the, we've had this like since two thousand twelve and haven't had any issues with it whatsoever like you know so yeah I, I would recommend it you know it, like I said it's a fighter but it's a it's better than the Atari Jaguar because ha you have more games to play. So yeah, um, so yeah, but it is a fail. I didn't do well at all, um, and um, it's a shame. But I would, I would recommend it if if you want to. But these day and age, um, I don't know. I say it'd be hard to find. Maybe I don't know. So yeah, I would recommend it. Yeah, if if you if you're interested, if you're not, then we don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, guess something else. I guess you know. Um, so yeah, this this seven eight hundred. Uh, I don't know how long I don't, I don't know how long it lasted. It, it didn't last that long. Like I said, it came out in nineteen eighty seven. Uh, I think it was discontinued in eighty nine, and then the Atari Lynx came out in eighty nine. We'll do a, a video on that later. But the seven eight hundred, it plays both Luigi games. So that's it for the system. I can't think of that nice to say about it. Uh, oh yeah, when, when when you hit the power button, um, it the uh, lights up green. It has an LED light, which is a good thing. So at least you know it's on. If you see a green light, that means it's on. So you know that there's power going going into it. You know, but it's, but it's a twenty six hundred didn't have an LED light, so you had no idea if the system was on or not. You know, I mean, you just had to uh, tune it in and hope that it come up on the screen. So this this has a light letting you know that there's power going into it. You know. So uh, yeah, I mean, um, that's it for the system. This is just a failure. In the States, it's called the, the, the Atari 7800 Pro system, but over here in Ireland, it's just 7800, so. Um, and we've we, we got this boxed with um, that piece of shit controller, and i got a gamepad with it. Uh, I didn't get any games with it, uh, but we had uh, Asteroids built in, but we already had uh, hundreds of 2600 games anyway. So that's it, you know, uh, for the system. I can't think of anything else to say about it. I would recommend it, despite it being a failure. Uh, there's... So yeah, okay. so that's it for the system and, and the controller. Um, look, I said it, yeah. and uh, and also like the, the seven eight hundred, it uses the paddle controllers for it, that, that the twenty six hundred uses. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go on to games now. Right? You know, look, I said it plays both um twenty six hundred and seven eight hundred games. So this is a twenty six hundred game, Crystal Castles. Now this one's been raped as you, as you can see. Sorry about that. See the big hole. Now we didn't do it. Someone else did. We got this used. I I got two fifty, yeah, no box. Two 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 euro fifty. Uh, just yeah, I, I didn't need a box. <laughs> but whoever had this had some fun with it or some. Sorry, sorry about that. But yeah, Crystal Castles. Crystal Castles. It plays Bentley Birder, collecting all the crystals in the castle, and it has an isometric sort of view. So it's pretty advanced for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and it's monsters and other things out to get you. So uh, I believe that this was an arcade game as well. We never played the arcade version, but it's a great game. It's pretty good for for, for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. So yeah, I would highly recommend the uh, Crystal Castles. You know, um, and it just came out in nineteen eighty four. Yep, and uh, so yeah, um, if if this had come out in nineteen eighty two, it probably would have done better. But the fact 
people. It's a great game, would, would, would recommend, and like I said, the 7800 will play 2600 games, which is awesome. So Crystal Castles will give it an 8 out of 10, it's a very good game, in my opinion. And it's 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 one of the more u u unique games on the uh, 2600, you know. So yeah, Crystal Castles is awesome. Now, um, this is a, an Atari 7800 game. Uh, uh, Karateka, or, or, or however you want to pronounce it, Karateka or whatever, you know. The, um, the, the beat em up game looks street for it, but, um, looks street for it, but a lot, a lot more primitive. And, uh, it's one on one. You play, you see that going, we, you play as him, right, and that's his girlfriend, and, he, and you're trying to rescue her from, from this deal or whatever, you know. And, uh, this came out in 1994, and, um, it's it's not it's um if it, it's not like Street Forty Two where it's fast fluid animation and the controls are spot on. This is a lot slower paced. I see the way it has super game characters just to get you the boy at least, you know. Uh, it's just slow. It's the controls are very delayed, and in my opinion, it's just an it's just a mediocre game. It's nothing special about this, in my opinion. I see the way it's called a pro system. Yeah, so uh, it's 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 mediocre. It's just um, it's um, I wouldn't recommend it. And we we paid about twenty euro for this, not worth twenty in my opinion. Uh, so um, it's just I thought this would be like um Street Fighter Two or something, but it's, it's just not as good. Nowhere near as good. Um, so we'll give it a a far a, a far out of ten. It's just a not a great game in my opinion. Car attack it. Cartiga, whatever you know. That's another uh, game. Ghostbusters by Activision. Uh, Eight ninety four. This came out. Now uh, I got this box complete, and I paid twenty five euro for this, and it's not worth it, in my opinion. It's a. Uh, it's just. Um, it plays the the Ghostbusters theme song the whole fucking time. It never stops. The now. You're on this grid, re right? like like t twelve squares, three going down like that, and there's lines going like that. Now, these three, these twelve blocks are meant to be like, buildings, re, right? and the lines going around them are meant to be is meant to be the streets, like you know the roads, re, right? and you do it around in the uh, golf course car, and every so often a uh, thing blinks, and there's ghosts there. So then you drive over there and you you go into two little fuckers like that that are meant to be the um the ghost buses and each one fires out the uh the the, the yolk from the proton packs, you know the, the yolks the yum yolks and you cast the ghost and then you 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 bring it back to the um the uh, headquarters. Now when you're driving to um a, um a place the the screen is gigantic, you see a big thing out of the road, a big you see the road like that with the lines and a gigantic um Ghostbusters car like that and it's 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 that big, right? The car is that big and there's the there's the road and uh every so often a ghost will come and you press the forward button and there's like um a ghost um busting thing on top of the roof of the car and sucks sucks in the ghost. So that's pretty much it, like there's not much else to it than that. You just catch the ghost in your car or, or ask the ghostbusters themselves. And um, there's only like uh, what two ghost buses and they won't look identical. So uh, there's uh, not a lot of variation here, you know. Uh, it's just and it's just just boring, you know. It's just not a lot to it. Uh, and like I said, the ghost buses team the whole time. Uh, it's um, I can't believe I paid thirty euro for this, but I got a fully boxed. So apparently, the best thing about this game is the is the art cover, the box cover, in my opinion, you know. Um but it's playable, it's just very boring in my opinion, you know. So we'll give this a, a three out of ten. That's my own personal opinion. But it's, it's a very boring. I mean on to the next game. It's a seven eight hundred game. And uh, this is a uh, pole position two. Now uh, I have a uh, pole position on the Atari twenty six hundred and this is a sequel. Uh, I never played this in the arcade. Um, I played the first one, but I never played this one. It's more advanced. Uh, there's like uh, six tracks instead of just one. 
and the car the cars look more realistic to look formula one cars and the graphics and all and the music's better so and the uh the 7800 version is pretty identical to the ar arcade version so yeah it's pr pretty good you know um so yeah i would recommend it you know uh if you know um if you like f1 driving games um so yeah we will give it an 8 out of 10 you know it's, it's pretty good in my opinion you know but like i said there's nothing I out of time for a power position too. It's, it's, it's a good game. I like it. You know. Right. On to the next game. Right. This is Crossbow. Um, for the uh, 2600 reach. And uh, this came out in 1987. And um, the thing is, you see the score here. Right. You're walking along. Right. Well, the, the, the computer controls the walking. Right. And there's stuff falling from the score. Right. Four balls and other stuff, and you have to shoot them and make sure that they don't hit your man's head, because if they hit his head, he's dead. We right? and the stuff on the ground like snakes and and boulders and stuff like that, and um, you have to shoot them out of the way. So you're moving the course around the screen, shooting everything, and making sure that nothing happens to this guy here. And he um, there's like six or seven locations on this map, and you you do one way after the other, you know. One's like a desert region, one's like a forest region, you know, and you, you just have to shoot everything and make sure nothing hits them. And you, you have three lives. It's it's one or two players, so it's um we, we like it. It's good. It, it's it's a y unique sort of idea, and I guess that you're you're actually using a crossbow to shoot the stuff out of the sky to to to, to, to keep the sky safe. Uh, so yeah, it's it's pretty good. I, I like it. It's it's nothing. Um, it's not bad at all in my opinion. So yeah, I'd recommend the uh, crossbow. I would give it eight out of ten. It's a, it's a it's a good game. I like it, you know. Wait, what's the next one? We've got a lot of games, and uh, this is I, I guess this is part three. yeah this is part three to my Atari game. So let's call it that and Sam Day Hundred as well. I'm trying to think of a title for the video, so I'm gonna put it Atari. Seven eight hundred and games part three. Yeah, that sounds good. Right, this is Bob Laser, right? Uh, look again, super game cartridge. You know, um this is made by Lucas Film in nineteen eighty five. Uh, this is meant to be like uh, football except that there's robots, it's like, or like fucking hovercrafts, right? And you know, there's the ball and it's it's one on one like, you know. And there's the goal. See the, the two things there. So whoever scores the most goals in the time limit wins. And it has a 3D perspective on this like, chess barred ground. So it's okay for what it is. I mean, if you're into football story games, except your, your hovercrafts in, in the future on a chess board, then yeah, it plays pretty well for what it is. And it's a very unique idea. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good fit. It's a good game. It's just very, um, it's it's unique. So, if you're into football story games with robots and hovercrafts and stuff, then yeah, I mean, we, we had fun playing this game. It's 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 unique. Lucas film. It's 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 something other than Star Wars, which is a a, a good thing. So yeah, we'll, we'll give it a, a, a eight out of ten. It's a good game, in my opinion. Bob Laser. You know. <laughs> Sorry. We enter the next game, which is a classic super breakout. You know, uh, you have to uh, break through the, uh, the the wall here. See the wall? See the the multi colored wall? You have a um a, a panel on the bottom of the screen. You have to uh, bounce the ball back and break through the wall. Except this one has uh, um, music sound effects. Every time it, um you hit the ball up into the wall, it makes a different sound effect. And it's faster and harder than, than the original breakout. But it's a classic game. And uh, it's best played with paddle controllers, you know. Uh, so this came out in 1978 before I was born. But this is a classic Atari game. And we would, would highly recommend it. Uh, uh, so yeah, Super Breakout. It gets a, a 9 out of 10 for me. It's, it's a, one of them games you have to have if you're an Atari fan. Or if, you have, or if you're thinking about being one. Uh, uh, yeah, super breakout. Uh, a must have, in, in my opinion. Uh, it's better than uh, than more, the, the rest of them games that I just told you about, in, in my opinion. You know. 
And I think there's going to be a part four to this because I've got a lot more games. <laughs> Loads more. Right. This is Night Driver. And I'm in. Um, yeah, now, this is one of, one of the launch games for the Atari 2600. Yeah, it came out 1980, you know. And uh, I actually like this game. A lot of people don't seem to like it because they, they crash all the time and it's frustrating. Uh, the thing is, you have 90 seconds to get the drive as far as you can. And uh, you have to avoid other cars and hit, hit the side, hitting the pylons on the side of the road. So it's very basic, but I actually like it because it's challenging. It uses paddle controllers and um, it's a first person perspective, except you're driving a car. Now the screen is totally black to make it look like it's night time. And I, I find it, I, I like the game. A lot of people don't seem to like it because they keep crashing all the time. Uh, but I think it's challenging. It's and all driving games had to start somewhere, and I believe this is, this is one of the earliest, if not the the first driving video game. Night driver, but uh, a lot of people hate it. Uh, I like it. I like it. I do. Um, uh, I have fun playing. I play it all the time when I'm in work, on my break or, or whatever. It's just ninety seconds to to kill. You know what I mean? And it, it, yeah, I, mean, I like it. I do. Uh, so yeah, so Night Driver, um, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Now a lot of people wouldn't give it that rating, they'd probably give it a 2 or something because it's so frustrating to control and pointless, but I, I like the game, I do. I, 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 every time I, I start up my Atari, I, I play it. So Night Driver is a, is a very good game in my opinion, and I must have in my opinion, but that's my, my opinion, you know what I mean? You know? I'm sure a lot of people out there would wipe their ass with it. I hope they don't do that because it hurt. You know, I say it would. Anyway, uh, next game is Backgammon. Now, this is one of the launch games as well for the, um, the Atari 2600. And Backgammon, it's um, released in 1979, the year I was born. And I just can't understand how to play this game. I've tried multiple times to understand how to play this game. I've looked up on YouTube and people have explained to me in depth how to play the game but I still don't understand and they call me an idiot or a dumb bastard whatever. I just don't understand it so uh, I keep trying to understand it um, I, just, I just can't wrap, wrap my head around it. So uh, we'll just give it a 2 out of 10. I just, I just find it frustrating that I can't figure this out. What am I supposed to do? There's like 12 arrows like that, or, or whatever they are, and it's like wheat and, just wheat, wheat and red little yolks like that. And you have to move them around, it's like a bird or something, I don't know, um, I don't know, I don't understand it. Uh, so, yeah, 2 out of 10 for backgammon, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah. Yo, on to the classic breakout, you know what I mean, uh, I must have in my opinion, uh, if it wasn't for this, there would be no Super Brago, you know, it's just a great game. Like, uh, you bounce the ball back with your paddle and you had to break through the wall, the, multi the multi-coloured wall. Brilliant stuff. And, um, yeah, must have a more opinion Brago, you know. Awesome stuff. So, I'll give it an, an 8 out of 10, you know, for uh, breakouts, you know. Now... On to another uh, classic game, Combat, you know, uh, now this is a, a two player game only, so that's, that's the only drawback to it, but if you have two players then it's a, it's, a, it's a fun game, it's tank versus tank, or plane versus plane, uh, you, you have like a two, a two minute time limit and whoever can get, get the high star wins, you know, so, and um, it's pretty cool for a two player game, uh, well, for one player it's pretty boring, in fact, Sort of pointless. So um, it is a good, great game. Um, so we'll give it eight out of ten. You know, even though it's a two-player game. Yep. Right on to an another game. Now this one doesn't work, but I do have a working version of it in my wardrobe up there. This is Qbert. This 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 um character doesn't work. You know, I don't know why, but it's made by Parker Brothers Qbert and. You jump on, you see the man there, you jump on all the squares and you change it from yellow to blue and then you move, you move on to the next uh, mountain or pyramid, you know. I have it in there, you know, um, 
And uh, the thing that's great about this, every time Q-Bird hits uh, an enemy, he, he curses or something in his own language, which is the first game I ever heard a character cursing. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, Q-Bird. I would highly recommend it. And a must-have if you're going to get an Atari 2600. But this one here, uh, Parker Brothers, this, this character here is Parker Brothers. Uh, I have a, a proper Atari 2600 uh, Q-Bird that works just fine. But uh, the reason why I got this, it was only 50p and because uh, it doesn't work, you know. So, uh, yeah, but, but the game, I do have it in there and it works just fine. So for Q-Bird, I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It's, it's one of them games you have to have if you're going to get a 2600, in my opinion, you know. Next game, Outlaw. You know what I mean? Outlaw is a um, it's a two player game. I only uh, released in nineteen seventy nine. It's, it's based in the Wild West. It's it's uh, gunslinger against gunslinger. You know, and there's a time limit. And, um, it's like um, the fellas l l look like matchstick men except they're wearing cowboy hats and with guns. And it, there's uh, trees in your way and there's other um, barricades. And uh, you can bounce the gun off the walls and try and hit the other guy if you want it. So it's a cool two player game. Um, and there's a, a target practice mode, which is pretty much the only uh, one player um, uh, option. It's just like a around uh, bullseye and it moves up and down the screen, you have to shield it. So it, it, it's still a good game, in my opinion. It's, um, I would give it a 7 out of 10. And this is released in 1978, League, like, you know. And. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it with yeah, Outlaw, you know, but uh, it's best if you have a, a second person. Like, like combat, you, ha we, you, you really need a second player. It's mainly just a two-player game, but still a very good game, Outlaw, in my opinion. So, yeah, great stuff. Now, this is Choplifter for the, for the Atari 7800. And uh, this is a great game. Uh, you're in this uh, helicopter and you have to rescue um, uh, these fellas that are stranded. And uh, there's tanks and uh, other helicopters out to kill you. So you have to uh, uh, pick these guys up and drop them back at your base. And drop them back at your base without getting killed. So it's a pretty good game, in my opinion. Um, it's a uh, it's, uh, trap lifter. It um, came out in 1982, but it didn't get released on the Atari 7800 until 1988. So yeah, it's a pretty good game. I would recommend it if you're going to get a, a 7800, you know. A uh, chop lifter. So yeah, it's pretty good, like, you know. So yeah, I'll give it an 8, eight out of 10. Uh, chop lifter, you know. Now, the next one. Right. Ace of Aces, right, uh, for the uh, 7800. Uh, released in 1988 for the Atari 7800. Made by Accolade. Uh, I haven't played this one that much to be honest with you, but what I do remember, it's garbage. Um, it's not good at all. Now, you see the way it's a top down, uh, the, the airplane is top down. I thought that's the way the game would be, but like, uh, sort of like Capcom's 1943, uh, I thought it'd be top down playing like that, and you're, you're moving around shooting stuff, you know, uh, other planes. I thought it'd be like 1943, but it's not. It's actually um you're inside the inside the cockpit like a forced person view. So it's just awkward trying to can control it's it's, a, it's like a simulation, you know, rather than like uh nineteen forty three where the planes are flying around shooting. Shit. So it's frustrating and it's awkward, um and trying to control it. But now, now that's what I remember. I, I didn't play it that much because I was so pissed off. Because this is one of them games that misled me based on what I was seeing. We thought it was be a top down uh, airplane game where you just move around shooting stuff. Look look Capcom's nineteen forty three but it's not. Uh but I could be completely wrong because I haven't played this in a long time. But I do remember I, I didn't like it. You know, so I d I wouldn't recommend it. And uh so yeah, I'd, I'd pass on this one, Ace of Aces. I'd, I'd give it a, a, f a far out of ten. I don't remember much about it to be honest with you. But I would pass on this Ace of Aces. Okay. Now, on to the last um, 7800 game I have. You know, uh, Fatal Run. Now, this is originally a, a 2600 game, but this, this version has better graphics now. The thing is, uh, you ha this is uh, 
you drew is a blue card there. It has machine guns and all. Now you have this uh, uh, medicine. It's it's it's, it's, uh, it's set in the future, right? And uh, these people are doing are doing with a virus, and you have this life saving uh, medicine to save them. So you have to drive from city to city as fast as you can and deliver the the the, the medicine. But the, there's uh, other guys out to kill in their cars, and there's there's roadblocks, and there's um other hazards and. The whole thing is to get from city to city as fast as they can uh, and deliver the medicine. And if you do that, uh, the people give you money so you can buy uh, more armour, um, better weapons for your car and stuff. So it's a Force Atari 2600 game where there's natural story and you get upgrades for your car and stuff. So yeah, it's it's, it's very good in my opinion. And yeah, um, I would get it. Uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it. So, uh, eight out of ten for Fate and Run, you know. So, so look, I said that's the, this is the last Atari seventy, last Atari seventy eight hundred game that I own. Uh, I don't really feel pushed to get anything else for the, for the seventy eight hundred. Uh, I haven't seen anything else at the moment that that that's, that's piquing my interest. Uh, we always keep a new out on eBay and Amazon just to see if there is that, um, but. Like, the moment that, 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 that's catching my interest, so I don't think I get any more 7800 games. I don't know, we'll see what happens, you know. But like, like, uh, the, like uh, the uh, 2600 has a, a better lure by your games than, than the 7800 does, you know. So, the next game is a classic and a must have missile command. You know, we played this game non stop in Muslim, no, 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 no. If we couldn't play Space Invaders, we'll be get we'll be playing this next. You know, great game, nineteen eighty one, brilliant. Uh, you have six cities and you had to protect them from missiles that were coming from the sky. They meant to be like nuclear missiles or something like that, and you had to shoot up your own missiles to destroy them in, in mid air. And they come at different trajectories and different angles of speeds. And every so often, there's just little like uh, little bombs like that, and you have they're even hard to hit because they're so small. And every ten thousand points, you get an extra city. So this is awesome, this is a must have game if you're gonna get a 2600 missile command. Uh you know, brilliant. You know, um ten out of ten in my opinion, missile command. It's just brilliant. You know? So yeah. Okay, next game. Indie five hundred, you know, uh uh So uh this came out I don't know what year it came out, I think this came out in nineteen eighty. Based on the American uh, driving Indy 500, uh, you know, something like Formula 1 cars except they're Indy cars, Indy 500. Uh, now, this is basically a two-player game. Now, there is um, uh, uh, tracks that are like, uh, you have 60 seconds to do, do as many laps as you can, like, you know. And uh, th there's a, a variety of tracks there's an ice race, there's um, crash and scar, there's tag, you know. Now this uses the uh, driving controllers and um, uh, I, I believe this is the only game that uses the, driv the driving controllers. Which is, uh, the uh, driving controller controllers are, are identical to paddle controllers. Except they have a picture of a car and driving. It, it beyond the paddle controller itself, a, a big a sticker with a, a car and driving controller. Because I won't work with a pallet controller or a joystick, so we have to have um, the driving controllers. But it's really just a two player game. Uh, but it's. Uh, we'll still have fun with, with the time controls and stuff. So it, it is a good game, in my opinion. Uh, uh, so we'll give it an, uh, an 8 out of 10 in the 500, you know? We like it. Next game is a Donkey Kong. It's Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, Boy Nintendo. And CBS, you know, uh, this is a classic game, a must have. Uh, um, Brilliance. You, you, you play as Mario and you have to rescue the princess at the top of the screen. And Donkey Kong's at the very top, throwing down barrels at you trying to kill you. So it's a brilliant game, and one of them games you have to have, you know. And uh, I believe this is where uh, Donkey Kong got his, got his, his start on Atari, you know. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but uh, he definitely he he was definitely on the twenty six hundred before the NES was, you know. So yeah, uh, eight out of ten Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong classic game. Yep, you have to have it. You must have it. 
as they say. Now, this is a game that, that, that tricked me, really. But, 2 in one game cartridge. It's not. It's just one game that has 32 variations of the same game. Who thought it was 32 games? 32 different games. It's not. You know what I mean? Uh, I believe someone... See how cheap the label is in our league. You know, there's, no, there's nothing not on, the on the bottom order. It's a spaceship game. You look at this UFO shooting down airplanes and tanks and stuff like that. It is a good game. It's, there's nothing wrong with the game. It's just, it's just one game. We thought it was 32. It's just... 42 variations of the same game. Uh, it's a side scrolling um, shooting game. It is a good game, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just. Uh, what thought it was 32 and 1. Oh, call me an easy, call me a dumb bastard. It came out in 1988, so yeah. Uh, it, is, it is a good game. So I'll give it, I'll give it 7 out of 10. You know, but my own was fit, was tricked. There it was. Now to the next game. Boxing, real sports boxing, you know, um, my uh, This is the first uh, boxing game where the people actually look like people and they're, they're hitting each other. You have like uh, four minutes to, 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 to knock the other guy out, and there's a selection of different characters, white or black, which is very unique for, for the 2600. You know, so it, for a boxing game, it's, it's probably the best that you're going to get on the 2600. Uh, and uh, we'd, we'd like it a lot, so we'll give it 8 out of 10. That's if you're into boxing, would we'd highly recommend it, you know. And to the, now, that one I already done, uh, Meyer Brothers. So, uh, next game, Radar right Lock, you know, what I mean, uh, released in 1989, and uh, he. You play as that black um, stealth bomber type aircraft and you're shooting down other aircraft and every so often you have to refuel your, your plane by, by uh, connecting up with the airplane and uh, look, uh, reloading your, your guns and missiles so uh, it's pretty good you know uh, for the Atari 2600 something like uh, Afterburner just not as good as Afterburner uh, so yeah pretty good released in 1999 so it, it is a good game uh, in my opinion uh, but like this had so much competition like Afterburner and G-Lock and stuff which were far superior but this is a good game in my opinion and I like it a lot so yeah if, if you like airplane games like Afterburner Rider Lock is a good game and uh, I'll we'll give it an 8 out of 10 you know so that's it for, that's it for this little part of the my Atari uh, stuff I, I, I'm going to call it Atari Part 3 with the 7800 included you know, because there, there will be a part for some stage, because I have a lot more games to show you. But that's um, uh, pretty much it for now. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching. If you, if you took any interest, I doubt anybody did, but if someone did, thanks. And if you want to subscribe, go ahead. Uh, so thanks very much, and I'll see you all later. Bye bye.